Welcome to this edition of the Biker Angle. It is 1025 of 2018. I want to all welcome you all to the show. And boy, do we got a good show for you today. We're either going to have uh, the legends up on here today. We're also going to have a pretty freaky story coming out of London. It seems like they got a motorcycle theft problem over there. And there is a new group called Bikers Bikers out there doing what the cops should do. But first, let's go into some of the news for today. It seems like there have been pipe bombs sent all over to the Democrat officials' office. And now they are pissed. Well, my question is, and I don't, I don't condone this at all, sending pipe bombs to anybody. But over the last couple of weeks, you've seen these protesters out there, you know, harassing these GOP lawmakers and the Democrats, oh, it's collateral damage. Well, it kind of sucks when it turns around, don't it? And you wonder with all the rhetoric going on in this country, people are getting sick and tired of it. My question is, when is the Democrats going to step up and condone groups like Antifa, who were just out in Portland <laughs> directing traffic and kicking and screaming at people, calling them white privilege, white racists? You wonder why shit like this is going on now. The right is starting to fight back, and it's not going to get pretty because everybody out there knows the left, they hate guns, so they don't got any. But the right, they some crazy motherfuckers, and they got a lot of them, man. Let me tell you, they got them uh, shit. So think about that next time you're out there on the left crying and whining uh, about what's going on right now. And you know what? You reap what you sow. <laughs> but let's go into this story. Now, this has to go from London, and you'll see a video of it. They actually got it in action where they caught one of these guys. It was pretty funny, although one of them, you know, hit the, you know, hit the pavement, which ain't cool. But this came out of England again. The motorcycle crime spree in London has some bikers taking shit in their own hands. <laughs> One such group is Biker Biker, who invited MCN, which is a really good motorcycle uh, website. You might want to go over there and take a look at them. Real good stuff from over the pond. To one of their anti-theft patrols to show what goes on. Quote, I've had three jicksters nicked. End quote, says Shane. Shane, my fault. Biker Biker founder. I wanted to do something other people aren't. At first, it was just me and my wife going around looking for stolen bikes, but soon people saw what we did, liked it, and wanted to join in. One of those is Elliot. Quote, I found these guys and just joined in. It is so rare to find a group of people doing something for the community for absolutely nothing. Before heading out, Shane briefs us on the do's and don'ts. Basically, respect the law. And we head into the night. I was expecting a quite few hours, but within minutes, we're chasing down a pair of bike thieves. Two lads on a smashed up scooter with no lights or number plate come flying towards us on the pavement. A few U-turns later and the chase is on. We head towards a housing estate and a couple guys try to box them in. Things get heated as we close in, legs kicking out widely. Omar reaches out and everyone comes clattering to the ground. Within seconds, the two lads have darted in opposition directions, never to be seen again. The police arrive a few minutes later and secure the bike, plus a helmet that one dropped. They've appreciated of the efforts, but it's clear questions remain about gangs of vigilantes on the streets. So, you see, it turns in from a good story to now all of a sudden they're a gang of vigilantes because they're out there doing something the cops cannot do. But let's take a quick look at the video. You'll actually see this uh, chase happening. 15th of October, 2018. Biker Biker received intelligence from multiple sources stating that bikes were being stolen in Epsom and being dumped or set alight in a local Greenland. With the evidence mounting, Shane went about organising another patrol in the area, which is infested with moped-enabled thieves. 
last out looking for these abandoned bikes, one of our biker biker members noticed the moped thieves in action, this time mounting the pavement. With little time to react, the group set sights on the thieves and get to work at getting close enough to gather enough evidence for the police to take further action. Whilst approaching the pair, one of our members was kicked by the thieves, forcing him to retaliate with a like for like kick. Unfortunately for our member, the kick backfired and caused him to take a light fall towards the curb. We then all united as a team to bring these thieves to a stop. That's something else, ain't it? You know what? It's pretty sad because I heard in London that now the mayor even wants to freaking ban freaking knives. Can you believe it? What's going on over the pond? Hey, Dibs, man, what's going on in your country, man? They want to be banning knives and shit over there. <laughs> they starting to sound like our gun nuts over here on the left over here in the United States. But next one we're going to go into is what good bikers do and this is something not only in the biker community that's going on but it's also going on with citizens around the country it's a great uh program where you buy a wreath and you put it on uh you know places like arlington on our veterans graves it is something special and i want to thank our one of our fans for bringing it to our attention that wanted to get played so let's take a quick look at what they do and what they're about involved with that organization make a quick donation to them that's really teaching our kids what veterans are all about without them there would be no country and this country owes these veterans everything everything that we have everything we're about goes out to them veterans we uh, thank you hats off to you and you know what? We love you guys to death. The next segment, we are going to be in Legends in the Motorcycle Scene. And the next one is special. Everybody knows who he is. Everybody hears him all the time. He's been a freaking forerunner to a lot of us in the motorcycle club scene as regards to content creators. He has given a voice to all all in the biker scene he's an awesome guy and his name fits him well and take a look at it good time charlie of bic radio Five bikers four bikers you're listening to the worldwide motorcyclism phenomenon this is bic the bikers inner circle you're locked on to the motorcyclism internet rock powerhouse. This is the Bikers Inner Circle on the BIC Radio Network. We're having a blast out here, and uh, here's another segment of the clubhouse and all the cool shit we like to do when we're out on the road. And I found uh, some really cool guys out here. Got a motorcycle club called the Fuckets, right? <laughs> Fuckets. Yeah. 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 So how you guys doing? Good. Sure. And you? Good. Yeah. So, so what do you yeah, thank you say? Your name and uh, you're the vice pres, huh? I'm LJ, yeah, national vice president of Fuckets. All right, Fuckets. This is all right. I'm, I'm national national president, the founder of the Fuckets. The founder of the Fuckets. There you go. So uh, now, uh, how long you guys been a uh, uh, chapter over uh, here at this at this? 2007 is when we started this thing up in Idaho. Okay, so now uh. uh when you guys were all sitting around a table, you know, like 
band like us with band names. Well, of course, mine was we named it me, but you know, <laughs> there's so many here, people already done named so many names like Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath. So how did you when you guys were all sitting around the table? Did it just come real quick or did you? Get into some bike rap. We got over here at Jim Owens Shop, Shreveport, Louisiana. Magic Touch Bayou Customs, man. You get around there, go check it out. But we're going to get into some old school biker rap for you. You're checking out Bikers in a Circle on the Internet Highways. Hope you're enjoying yourself. Uh, with Jim Owens, here he's a bad Dino over uh, Shreveport, Chapter. And uh, we're going to talk about all kinds of little different things. But uh, this is what we like to do with Big 7 Productions. We talk to old school guys, 30 years or better. You know, they lived it, they've seen the changes. Uh, and uh, teaching the up and comers what's what's. This is what I wrote for you. Yeah! Hope you like it. Much love and respect.
looks like you're having a bad night. You don't even know about a bad night, okay? Got fired from my gig, lost my best friend, he's keeping my guitar. My old lady's probably leaving me, and my motorcycle won't start. This is magic, man. Somebody's arranging something. <laughs> bigger than Kid Rock. You see, I'm going to work hard and I'll, I'll make you guys oh, proud of me. Hold on. Just the fact that you said I'm going to be bigger than Kid Rock, that's no big achievement. Hey man, how come you gave up playing music? The devil been chasing me since I was a young man. Son, if I was you, I wouldn't go no further up that trail. You're probably the only man that can help me. You've been duped by the devil. You believe in the devil, cuz? Of course I believe in the devil. He's been after me ever since I got in the fast lane. Uh, it's really you, man. Can I get a picture with you? everybody welcome i'm good time charlie you just entered the inner circle this is bikers inner circle facebook page and welcome 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 all motorcyclism and everybody out there that likes to ride on two wheels is welcome here to the home of bikers inner circle and don't forget our radio show www.bicradio.com you can get the free apps and listen to us 24 7 so god bless y'all and god bless american motorcyclism and that was Good Time Charlie. If you guys haven't listened to his show on BIC Radio, you might want to get over there and check him out. Like I said, Good Time Charlie, Charlie Brechtel, he is an awesome blues player, has played forever, and his show is kick-ass. In the mornings, he does a lot of Facebook Lives, and his radio show plays some of the most badass music around. So again... You want to get over there and check out Charlie. Again, he's awesome. He paved the way for all of us. He set the tone of uh, how we are supposed to go out there and kick ass, be non-politically correct. <laughs> if you have somebody you have in mind that should be featured on Legends of the Motorcycle Scene, make sure that you forward it to me at CubbiesRock1973 at gmail.com. Now, we got a lot of the favorites out there that people like. It's Ask Hollywood time. Okay, first question. Do you want a target on your back for law enforcement? Now, this had to do in regards to a motorcycle club. And he is correct that law enforcement targets Motorcycle club members, you know, it's no, it's no secret. They do. It's what they fucking do. <laughs> anyway, but I do have to disagree a little bit. Anybody who jumps on a bike is out there to be profiled because a lot of these Leos do not, you know what? They don't even uh, distinguish between a three-piece patch and somebody who's out there with a single patch. Shit. Case in point. You can, and this is why it's real freaking uh, serious that everybody gets involved and supports the Mongols on their patch case, because if that happens where the government can get a trademark, we are all in fucking trouble, because that just lines up the next laws coming in. In Oz, right now, and I'm sure my Oz uh, listeners will tell you, that you don't even have to be known to be with a freaking motorcycle club that's one of their, you know, outlaw type clubs. 
they'll pull you over for having a hog patch. <laughs> so trust me, you, when you're out on a bike, you automatically be a target for law enforcement. That's just the way it is and ha- as, has always been. The 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, whatever you have, it's always been cops against bikers. Now I know in 2018 they try to put on this freaking act where, you know, not all bikers are bla- bad, blah, 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 blah. You know, BS, bullshit. I call bullshit again BS. Anyway, you can go down to Texas where just last week a member of a club was pulled over and he was arrested for having a gun. Well, turns out he had no, you know, no criminal record, no anything on him. He even had a CCW and they still fucking put his ass in jail. So... If you're a biker, you're going to get freaking profiled. Even you rubs are going to. So, next question here. Good morning, all of us. I'm so old, we went to the beach. We had to lay on rocks. (laughs) Yeah, I remember that. Man, Hollywood, you brought up names I haven't heard in decades. Younger guys raised on uh, better 420 yeah we got some 420 going on man nowadays shit i bet the guys in the 60s would love us anyway my question i don't know why the sporty is now a girl's bike for decades the 1200 was the big engine my 06 is built not just to be feel but uh just plain uh, i can't read the rest of it buddy i'm sorry it's a little more smaller on the screen that i have it on right now but here's the deal with sporties i love them i own tons of them and the reason why i love them is because in chicago especially in the rush hour if you guys have ever been in a rush hour in chicago you'll know what i'm talking about with the sporty i liked how you were able to customize them i love the way they handled in the urban environment where you can go in and out in and out uh i just love the bike entirely man some of the best choppers were made out of freaking sporties and for those who think they're girly bikes well you can talk to the san francisco 81 where they used a lot of them because of the way the hills were out there so yes yeah, sporties shit if you got one Keep that motherfucker. You know, use it for a round the tar bar hopper or, you know, if you're in Chicago or in New York or one of the bigger things, those are the best bikes, I think, for inner city. And for those who call you a girl, just knock the fuck out of them, man. That's what I fucking do. <laughs> you know, I really didn't have that many, you know, bullshit problems when I was on a sportster, but it's all what the way you handle yourself as a biker and i'm not even talking about a club member a biker you got to sit up there you got to stand up for yourself you gotta you know what not give a shit what other people think about you and do you (laughs) that's what being a biker is about it's not riding a million miles it's not you know putting on a patch no it's a it's a specific type of attitude you have to have and you live your life by that attitude so i hope that answers your question james i love a fucking sporty let me tell you finally we have a message to a haters <laughs> again they can't come up with any good shit anyway outlaw bikers are a joke filled with cops and potential rats and cops they are punks and when they end up in prison They find out they are running shit, especially in Arizona. We have been checking their ass for a bunch of losers and punks who every day in the ADOC, long live AZ-1-2. Well, I can kind of guarantee that you got cops and shit in your shit too, man. Every organization does, but what the guy ain't telling you is bikers split with A-beers, freaking Texas uh, long ride, or uh, the fucking, what is that, the Southsiders, whatever, the Southsiders, whatever the hell it is. When you get into the joint, 
it goes by freaking race in there. You know, the blacks, you know, Hispanics, and then the whites. So, what I'm seeing here is probably a guy who got pissed off at one of my videos, especially about the mixed race one, because we've been getting a lot of freaking comments and haters on that one, let me tell you. You know, stuff that's like so old and so, you know, it goes on and on about race trader this, race trader this. You know what? They're a bunch of goose-stepping motherfuckers. That's about what they are. And to even try to respond to every goddamn one they put on gives me a freaking headache. <laughs> so that is the show. I hope you guys like the new format. Again, if you got any suggestions for bikers doing good or a news of the day story, make sure you send it in. Especially if you got somebody that you think should be in the motorcycle legends uh, category for that uh, part of the show also people been asking me tons and tons how they can donate to the show yeah we use paypal i put the bunny uh the button down there but the biggest thing to me is not the money see i make all my money you know in other ways as far as the affiliates and stuff like that if you really want to help the show you really want it to keep going and keep growing all I ask for, share it. Tell your friends about it. Invite them to the channel. Copy the links. Give it to them. You know, if you want to donate, we appreciate the hell out of it. You know, without our supporters, we wouldn't be here. But again, what I really like is if you share the show, it gets out there. Many more people find it. The channel grows on YouTube and our Facebook, our social media, all that grows. So that's a lot more worth in gold to me than you know money that's sent in but we do appreciate it you know don't think we don't but we really appreciate you guys if you share the show and also uh if you can't uh do the donation thing uh there's uh watch the videos and uh or the ads in front of the videos that we put on we make money off the ads if you watch them all the way through and all that stuff but we're not here to beg for money and we don't do that shit uh like i said again finally share 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 but with that thanks for the sales of the books you guys got us bumping november 1st the kindle copy of the iron order the year that changed the MC scene will be coming out, and paperback should be coming out a week later after that. You will also be able to get signed copies of uh, New Age of Biking and Brotherhood, a uh, donation that Long Rider made. They should be here any day now. I think it's uh, November 1st or through the 5th, whatever they said. Uh, if you donate $20 or more to Neon's uh, GoFundMe page, you will get a signed copy of that. So with that, I appreciate everybody uh, uh, tuning in, and I'll talk to you guys later. Be safe.